we prepared a very long manifesto because we think the manifesto would embarrass the, the, the government, which we thought would be the, the BN government. Uh, but we now find it uh, embarrassing because we have to fulfill all the nasty things <laughs> that we put into the manifesto. Still, we are managing. <laughs> and uh, when we won, uh, we thought there would be problems. Uh, there would have been problems if we had won by a small majority. But we won uh, by a very big, a big majority, not, not a two-thirds majority, but a very big majority, which uh, I think uh, caught the previous government uh, uh, and they, they were hardly able to react to this situation. Uh, there were many delays in announcing the, the opposition's uh, scores, but eventually they had to accept that uh, the opposition, their opposition had won, and uh, they gave him rather uh, nicely without any uh, attempt to frustrate us. Uh, high speed rail, etc. But uh, we uh, realized that we would not be able to pay the debt. And the, the agreements that were made with foreign contractors was unfavorable for Malaysia. And so, because of that, uh, we, want, we wanted to get out of that uh, contract. And uh, of course, that's not easy. Uh, contracts. Uh, can be committed if it would be equal to one US dollar and also for the high-speed rail uh, the distance of about 200 kilometers and a high-speed train uh, with that short distance doesn't really save any time so we decided that it's not both uh, projects were not viable and we are negotiating to either terminate or uh, maybe reduce the school or postpone to a later date. We are in the process of negotiating with them. Uh, so far, there have been no absolute rejection of our proposal. So we.
say to them that it means 1,000 billion. And uh, we could uh, perhaps raise a few billions, but we we'll raise uh, to find uh, the main uh, newspapers. They would not uh, report anything good about us. Of course, if we, there is anything bad, they would report uh, over and over again. But uh, the social media allows us to com com uh, connect with the people and tell them and respond to whatever it is that the government says. Uh, we find out that uh, if the government says, of course, every country controls immigration. Uh, we see that happening in Europe. We see that happening in, uh, in America. Uh, they have put up walls against Mexico and all that. <laughs> But uh, Malaysia is just like that. We want our people to be involved in whatever is happening in the country, but that we should allow a certain number of foreigners to come and live and even eventually gain citizenship in our country. But we have, when we've talked about 700,000 and even 1.5 million people coming to live in Malaysia from other countries, I think that's not on. We, we don't encourage that. Could a further question up here? Um, the gentleman with the glasses. My question relates, Steve Cartman, an attorney. My question relates to the global economy. There's been some concern in recent months about the fragility of some of the emerging markets, countries such as Turkey and Argentina. You led Malaysia at the time of the last emerging market crisis, uh, the Asian financial crisis. Do you see any parallels between that situation and what's uh, unfolding uh, in the emerging markets now? And do you have any uh, lessons you could draw from that experience that would be relevant today? Yeah, it's about the parallels between the Asian financial crisis of 97 when you're in office PM and problems now that we're facing in uh, emerging markets. Yeah, <clears throat> the Asian financial crisis of 1997 was created by currency traders. They they can actually buy and sell currencies which they don't even own and depress the value or uh, re revalue the currency, and that is very. Uh, that's not good for business. When you don't know the value of the currency, is very difficult to budget for the whole year. So because of that, uh, we had to take action to take away our currency from the market. Uh, we, the market cannot sell or buy our currency. If they do, we will not recognize uh, the, the sale. So that's how we dealt with it. And I think uh, some small countries uh, would not be able to do that kind of thing, uh, the ones, uh, the strategy we adopted. Because we, it, Malaysia has got very big savings, 40% of GDP, the highest uh, savings rate in, among most countries. Uh, but where, where countries are short of foreign exchange, they don't have enough saving, I need to press their, their currency deliberately they become very poor. And that's not fair for people who want to make money out of trading uh, to depress the uh, value of the currency and impoverish people that is morally wrong. wrong. Uh, but uh, if the market feels that the currency is now not reflecting the real value, then the market uh, can uh, show their, their, their feelings by not using the currency or using the currency. Uh, then, of course, the currency will remain, uh, will be, will be reflect the valuation made by the market. But currency traders, they got nothing to do with the market. They can deliberately reduce the, the value or increase the value. So, uh, small countries uh, find difficulty in uh, uh, dealing with this uh, fluctuation in the value of their currency. It's far better if we don't have currency trading. Currency is not a commodity. You cannot eat it. 
but uh, you want to price of coffee or sugar is okay, but currency should not be traded the way commodities are traded. Let me move to this side of the room here. There is a young woman here. Thank you. See the mic coming in your direction. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Sejun Tan, and I'm a student, I'm a Malaysian student here studying in New York. Um, my question is about how you see human rights progressing in Malaysia, um, especially in terms of children's rights, especially with the rise of child, I mean, the issue, the issue of child marriages being very present in the media these days, um, as well as the issue of LGBTQ rights, um, also with uh, labor, uh, sorry, migrant labor rights. Well, the idea of human rights and the uh, uh, the, the kind of things that constitute uh, human rights is, uh, comes out of Western countries, uh, which have a different culture than a lot of the Eastern countries. So while we respect the rights of uh, people, but at the same time we have also to think about our, our, our own moral values. So if they are in conflict with our moral values, we cannot accept them. But we will accept the rights of people to speak as long as they don't provoke people to fight. And also the right of people to move around, uh, to have the free press, etc. But there is nothing absolute about human rights. You cannot do certain things, even in Western countries. If, uh, for example, everybody comes to this hall naked, I don't think the Western people appreciate that. <laughs> there are certain things that you just uh, say that thus far and no more. So we, we may say that more often than.